I wanted to do that, one, because the playing was beautiful, but two, I wanted to get everyone's attention because even still. Good morning once again, everyone. All right, I invite you to please rise if you are able and join us in our call to worship. It's on the screen and also printed in your bulletin. Just as the body has many parts, Though we are many, one cannot say to the other, for we are indispensable. We need each other, and God has chosen us to be his body. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, which is a Michael W. Smith tune uh, called How Majestic Is Your Name. It's hymn number 30 in your hymnal. So one of the things I said this morning when I was greeting everyone is that today is Trinity Sunday. How many of you have heard that word before, Trinity? Okay, very good. So does anyone know what Trinity is? You know what? There's a bunch of adults in the room that probably are confused about what the Trinity is because it's a confusing thing. But the concept of the Trinity is that there's God one God, but that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all part of God, right? That's a trinity, very good. But the Father isn't the Son, right? And the Son isn't the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit isn't the Father, right? But somehow all three of them are God. Confusing, right? You get it? You think you understand? Very good. They do all work together. But I brought something today, some things that I thought might be able to help us a little bit. Because if you take graham crackers and chocolate and marshmallows, what do you get? S'mores, yeah. But a s'more is all put together by three things, right? Yeah. So one part of a s'more is the graham cracker, right? You need the graham cracker in order to hold all the other pieces together. Does that make sense? So the graham cracker is a part of the s'more just like the Father is a part of God, right? And in 2 Corinthians verse six eighteen, chapter 6, verse 18, it says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty, Right? So we know that God is our Father, and that's a very important part of that piece of the Trinity. The Father is a very important part of that, okay? The next piece we have, probably everybody's favorite, the chocolate. Very good. Excellent. And this is an important part of the s'more, just like Jesus, the Son of God, is a very important part of God, correct? In fact, Scripture says this, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, God, was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. 
In Colossians 1.15, it says, He is the image of the invisible God. And then John 10.30 says, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. So we've got the Father, graham crackers, right? We've got Jesus, or chocolate for the s'more, correct? So we have one final piece. Marshmallows. And the marshmallows represent what? Not the angels. They do roast. You're right. That makes them that much better. Um, The Holy Spirit. Very good. So these represent the Holy Spirit. And this is what the scripture says about all three of those pieces coming together. In 1 John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, or Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So just like the graham cracker, the chocolate, and the marshmallow make up a s'more, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit make up God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that work? Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. You guys are great. How many of you would like a marshmallow? <laughs> Anybody want a marshmallow? Come on up. Come here. I couldn't show you all this stuff and not give you something, you know. Would you like a marshmallow? Go ahead. Would you like a marshmallow? There you go. There you go. So just remember the Holy Spirit while you're eating the marshmallow. Sound good? All right, excellent. Someone want to pray for us this morning? All right. Excellent. Thank you. There you go. Need help or you got it? Dear God, thank you for this day in our church and everything we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Have fun downstairs. Also, would remember all the graduates. And we'll be celebrating a few of those in a little bit. Uh, but if you have a joy or concern that you would like to share, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone around to you. One thing that I have is a joy from the church for today. Um, as you've seen through confirmation, through our children's time and everything else, our young people are very important to us here at Springvale. And we wanted to be able to celebrate our graduates uh, from this year and let them know how much we care about them and love them and are praying for them, uh, not just now, but throughout their, their life, uh, and how much we appreciate the accomplishments that they've made. Um, so we have some cards and gifts to be able to offer to them. Um, so I'll invite you up by name, Maddie Denninger. You're very welcome, Maddie. Stand here? Sure. No, well, I was like, do I go back? Do you want to stand here? Then I'll let you go back. (laughs) Uh, Jonathan Seitz or someone that may want to come and receive it for him. Jonathan is going to Bucknell. Bucknell. Excellent. Fantastic. And Corbin Sparks. There you go. You're very welcome. And what are next steps for you? Uh, Work. Work. (laughs) I think it's work for you too. Excellent. Very good. But let's give them a hand once again. We are so thankful for your accomplishments. You matter to us. Your life matters to us. What you do matters. Just know that our love and our prayers go with you always, and that you have the support of a whole church family behind you every step of the way. So thanks. All right. If there's no other joys or concerns, then let's turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for you. For you, God. You made us. You love us. You equip us and you call us. Lord, we're thankful for you. And as we gather this morning and we lift up our joys and concerns, we are confident that you hear our prayers, that you stand with our loved ones and our friends who are going through difficult times, 
either with medical procedures or COVID or cancer or um, birth abnormalities or all the different things that we've lifted up to you. We ask that you surround them with your healing grace, that you surround them with your presence and your comfort, your power and your love in this time. Lord, we also lift up to you the celebrations of anniversaries, of graduations, of uh, our, our children, and the wonder that they are for all of us. We're so thankful, Father. And Lord, we also know that you hear the prayers that are on our hearts that we have a difficult time expressing or sharing. And Lord, we're also thankful for your Son, who gave us a prayer that we could pray when we don't know what else to say. The prayer that he taught his disciples to share any time they were to pray. And now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the offering that is placed in our plates today, as well as the offerings that have been made online. And we also lift up to you for blessing those that have given of their time, their talents, and their gifts uh, through service to you in our church. Uh, we ask your blessing upon all of these gifts and offerings, and that you multiply them and help, that, help us to use them to be the church you are calling us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I ask that you please remain standing as we join in our hymn of preparation, which is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, hymn number 262.
Good morning, church. My first reading this morning is from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with the glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And my second reading is 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. Unity and diversity in the body. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so we are all we all, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would that sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And, all, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat them with special honor. As the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our pre presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving great honor the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is part of it. And that is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for this day. Thanks that we can come here to worship you, praise you, and honor you. And Father, I thank you for the gifts and talents that we have. Thank you that I just pray that we can use these gifts and talents to better serve you, stronger, strongly serve you, and to be a strong part of the body of this church and of you. And I pray all these things in your heavenly Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So you may have noticed, if you looked in the bulletin, the title of my sermon today is Even Pinky Toes Matter. And hopefully that'll make sense more as we go through the service today, because we're going to be talking uh, a little bit more deeply about the body of Christ and what that means for us. In our scripture today, we hear from Paul as he shares some of his insight into understanding what God's intent was in making us the body of Christ. This is something we all know. It was Jesus' intent. It was the reason that the gift of the Holy Spirit came to bind everyone together at that time of Pentecost when everyone was brought together as one and Jesus as the head. And this is where we find ourselves still, that we are a part of the body of Christ but people were having a hard time with this. And even at that time, with the entire church that was uh, forming under Paul's leadership at that time, there was still division. 
there was still different churches that thought that they were more important than other churches and everything, and Paul needed to address some of those issues and some of those concerns. So we hear more in uh, our passage from 1 Corinthians today where he's talking about the body in pretty simple terms. Um, you know, just here are some of the things that he's saying. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not, I do not belong to the body. That's pretty common sense, right? Uh, it can't be that way. Or if every part of the body was an ear, how would you smell? Or if every part of the body was a nose, how would you hear? If every part of the body was an eye, how would you taste? You know, the, it, he was getting into the nitty-gritty of the fact that the body needs diversity of gifts in order to handle all the different things that uh, life is going to throw at us, that the world is going to throw at us. We need people with different gifts and graces that can meet those needs. That's why we have diversity in our body. That's why we are a part of a greater whole and not just by ourselves. And that's something I want us to think about as we go through. And I was thinking as I was pondering this, uh, one of the things that drives me crazy with uh, sports announcing uh, or sports coverage on, on the news or what have you, especially when it comes to team sports, is you see an entire team of athletes out there fighting and doing their very best on the field, but the announcers only ever talk about individual players, Right? You hear about Jason Tatum with the Celtics and what a wonderful job he's doing, but you don't necessarily hear about everybody else. And Nathan could tell you more than I can about all that. But uh, talking about Tom Brady, you know, it's always Tom Brady. And if it wasn't for Tom Brady, the team wouldn't win. Well, I would like to argue against that. Because if you take a look at a football game anytime, you have multiple players that are out on the field. You have the defense, defensive line, you have the offensive line, you've got the special teams, and you have all these different players that are out on the field that have different functions that they need to perform in order for that team to do well, correct? It's not just Tom. If Tom Brady was out on the field and he took the ball and he threw it and there was no receiver, what would happen to the ball? It would just go bouncing down the field, correct? Correct. So obviously, it's not just him that's out there making things happen. But if you were to listen to the people covering, that's the one individual person that made everything happen. That's not the way it works, especially not in team atmospheres. But we also have to look beyond just the players on the field. They're the ones that get a lot of the attention. They're the ones that seem very significant but have you looked at the sidelines on those teams? You have the cheerleaders that are cheering on the, the teams, definitely. You have all the different coaches with their clipboards and their radios, and they're calling out plays, and they're redesigning things and getting it together. You have the trainers that are there in case someone gets injured to be able to go and take care of that. But you also have the people going around with trays of water bottles, right? And what do they do? Every time the players come in, they're just squirting water in their mouths and trying to get water into them as much as they can. Do we realize how significant they are to the ability for the team to do well? Do we hear their names getting lifted up and heralded as a significant part of the team? Maybe not. But that team would not be able to function if it wasn't for them being there and them doing their job. Everyone has significance. Everyone has a part to play. It's not just one person. It's everyone coming together in a wonderful orchestration to make all of that happen. It takes a whole team and the whole supporting staff to make any game, team, or even individual player successful. The same, is true, the same is true for the church. And that's what God intended. It's not just the preacher. It's not just the musician. 
It's not just the person coming up to read scripture or to share prayers or anything like that. It's every single person sitting in the pew that's a part of the entire body that makes up the church. And every single person here is a significant part of the church. Every single person here plays a specific role. Even watching the children each week, I'm so blessed to be able to say, who would like to pray? And almost every week, there's one of the kids that's like, I'll do it. How awesome is that? They are participating. They are disciples. They are learning, but they are also teaching, and they're doing significant things in the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God. And we need to celebrate that. But they are significant to the entire ministry of the church. And that's something we need to understand. It's very important. If we look at the Trinity lesson that I shared with the kids today, we could see the same concept at work there as well. First of all, we have to understand that God is, correct? He always has been, and he always will be. God has chosen, however, throughout our existence, throughout our memory of God, to express himself in three distinct ways. The first way he expresses himself is as the Father. The Father who calls all things into existence and created all that we know and see. Very important function and very important aspect of who God is. The other piece is the Son, Jesus Christ. He is God made flesh so that God could be intimate with his creation and share in the human experience as well as bring all of humanity back into relationship with God. Correct? Very significant role. If Jesus hadn't gone to the cross, if Jesus didn't come to begin with, what gospels would we have? What parables would we know? What teachings would we understand? What miracles would we be heralding on a Sunday morning for worship? In fact, who would we be worshiping? Jesus was significant and important, and it was necessary for God to come and walk among his people and let us know exactly who he is and give us a God that we could have intimate relationship with. The other piece of that trinity is the Holy Spirit, a little bit more mysterious yet very important to our understanding of God. The Holy Spirit is the unseen but truly felt presence of God that calls us and moves us into action for the glory of God and the realization of God's kingdom here on earth. How many of us have had those experiences of God that we can't understand? That feeling that we have inside that just we know it's God. Or those times that everything seems to be falling apart and we have a sense of peace that just washes over us. Or those times that everything seems wrong and we feel like something just gave us a hug. Or you hear about that mission opportunity and something starts tugging at your heart saying, you need to go. Those are the experiences that we have of the Holy Spirit. Those are the ways that God nudges us and moves us and inspires us and guides us forward into the things that he would call us to do. It's necessary, and it's a part of how we know who God is. While each part is distinct in our experience and understanding of what they have done and continue to do, they are each God at work in the life of the church, not just this church, the church universal, which is all of God's people united together as one body. So what does that mean for each of us and for our church? First, it reminds us that we are not alone as Christians or as a church. 
we are all part of a much greater whole. We as a church are not alone in trying to meet the needs we see in our world. We're not alone in it. We see huge needs in the world and we often get bogged down and wonder how can we possibly try and take care of that. Those problems seem way too big for us and we get depressed by that, feeling like there's something that we should be able to do but we can't. But if we remember, if we remember that we're not alone, that we're part of a much greater whole, then it gives us hope for being able to handle those. We as a church, again, are not alone in trying to meet the needs that we see in our world. Through partnerships with, our churches, with other churches like our cluster ministry and the City on the Hill Ministerium, we are able to partner with other brothers and sisters in Christ and affect greater change right here in our local community. And as part of a global denomination, we are able through our apportionments and mission donations to join with thousands of other churches and millions of other Christians to make a difference in our world. Recently, I had the opportunity to go to annual conference. And since I'm still getting to know a lot of people in the conference, I hung out with Jan the whole time, which was a wonderful time and being able to just talk with him and learn from his experiences and um, what he knew of annual conference and the Susquehanna conference. And one of the conversations that we had after they did a whole presentation of all the different missions uh, that the denomination does, that the conference is able to be a part of, and he was incredibly impressed by all the different things that we're connected with through, through our apportionments, through our mission donations and everything else, how we're able to be a part of a much larger connection. One that's not just taking care of the local community, not just taking care of Pennsylvania, but is taking care of families in, in Africa, in Asia, and South America, and all over the place. When the, there's a natural disaster and our teams from UMCOR show up with all the necessities that are needed in that time, what we do here in our offering and everything else goes into supporting those ministries. We're a part of something so much bigger than we recognize or remember sometimes. But knowing that we're able to be a part of each and every one of those things, to me, is a blessing. It is wonderful to know that through our faithfulness, even here in a local church, that we're a part of a global connection that is making a difference around the world. And that's because we're part of the body of Christ. And it's something that we need to remember. We need to remember. The other thing we learn from all of this is that each and every one of us matter to God. Each and every one of us individuals is a part of the body of Christ. And we all have a part to play. While the problems we see seem so much bigger than... Yep. While the problems we see seem so much bigger than us as individuals, when we realize that we are a part of something so much bigger then we can feel confident in our ability to make a difference. We may be a small part of the whole body, but this reminds us that even pinky toes matter. This is where the old pinky toe thing comes in. And one of the reasons I brought it up is I had an uncle uh, who had to lose a pinky toe from diabetes. And all of us were like, ah, oh, it's a pinky toe. And you think the pinky toe, it's just an insignificant part of the body. But what we didn't realize is how much it affects the whole balance of a person. That one toe, when they removed it, affected his ability to balance himself on that side of his body. I had no idea. The pinky toe matters. The pinky toe matters. Just like the water boy or water girl on a sports team may seem insignificant, the part they play is a part of the whole mechanism making that team successful. 
God has made us to be a part of his body. He wants us to be a part of his body. Each and every one of you is significant. We are all significant to God because we know that he loves us and that he fearfully and wonderfully made each and every one of us. And the one thing I need us all to remember, God does not make junk. Amen. <laughs> That was a lesson that I taught my youth always. God doesn't make junk. You're not junk. That is such a huge lie that so many people tell themselves anymore. They feel like they're insignificant or they're broken or they don't matter or that they were made incorrectly or that they are junk. And they are not. Scripture tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that God's works are amazing, and that we should know that full well. That means each and every one of us in this room is significant, and we matter, and we're important, and that we have a part to play. So don't be concerned about what part of the body you are. Just be thankful that you are part of the body to begin with. I have a friend of mine very close friend of mine, brother in Christ. We get together and pray together often. And he's always talking about, you know, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be the guy sweeping the streets, but I'm going to be there. You know, and that's, that's his part. He's like, you know, I've, I've messed up and everything else, but I know God loves me and I might be the street sweeper, but I'm going to be there on those streets of gold. And I always love you know, the humility that comes with that, but he, he just knows that aspect of maybe my part is smaller than other people's parts, but it is no less significant to God. For God, it's important, and I'm going to do my very best. And I think about that, and I think even if I only get to be the toenail of the pinky toe, I want to be the best toenail that I can be for God. We in our church are all part of God's work, God's amazing work. So let's do our best. Using the gifts that God has given us and the abilities that we physically and mentally have to do our best part for the body of Christ. Because when all of us, when all of God's people come together as a body and do our part, the world will change. And I know that all of us are praying for that. And that's what we need to realize. The hope is there. God has put everything in place. God has put himself as the head. Through the Holy Spirit, he is orchestrating and trying to bring everyone together for that whole. All we have to do is listen and be a part. Amen? Amen. Amen. I invite you to please rise and join us in our hymn of sending. In Christ there is no East or West, hymn number 285. Beloved, I'm so thankful to be a part of this church. 
I'm so thankful for the, the love and the fellowship that this church has, for the heart for ministry and the love for God. And I'm also thankful that we are a part of something so much bigger. And I want us to never forget that, that we can connect with other churches right here in our community and make a huge difference, that we're connected with churches around the world that are making a difference in so many ways, and that all we have to do is step up and be a part. So remember that as you go forth this week, that we are all a part of the body of Christ. Not one of us is a piece of junk, and that we were made intentionally to be a part of what God is doing in our midst. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.